Good morning, eighth graders. This is Mrs. Knackle from the guidance office, and um, this is the first part of getting you ready to schedule for high school. If you are watching this in a classroom right now, this part is just to give you information about how to schedule for next year and also thinking ahead through all the way up until you're going to be ready to graduate. What I'd like you to do is take notes um, or just write down questions that you might have. Again, if you're at FCA watching this in a week or so, we will schedule a, a actual session in one of your classrooms where we'll go in and we're going to hand out the actual paperwork that's connected with scheduling and walk you through those questions and help you with anything that may come up because of this video or thinking about um, high school. If you are a brand new student to FCA or the parent of a student, you're watching this video just to give you an idea of what FCA has. We would have provided you with the scheduling forms and paperwork and information via email. So that being said, again, I wanna welcome you to the high school scheduling meeting, get you ready for your um, ninth grade year. I'd like to start with the fact that an expert in anything was once a beginner. So we know that you are, this is all new to a lot of you, although some of you might have older siblings that have graduated or walked through high school. This is the first time for you. So please understand that we don't expect you to be an expert in scheduling. We don't expect you to know everything. What we're going to do is help you know where to look and the very first thing I would say is you can always come by or email the guidance office. Mrs. Stevens, who is the other guidance counselor here at FCA, and myself are here to do this. And we really, really do love helping students um, get ready for their schedules or do anything having to do with uh, getting ready for career, college, graduation, all of those exciting things that happen when you become a high school student. Now, we need to start with prayer. We start anything that we do that are great decisions in life. And I love this Proverbs, which basically says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your, your path. So I'm going to pray right now. Lord, I thank you so much for these eighth graders. I thank you for um, how much they're growing up, how things are changing in their life and I ask that as they transition from being junior high students into high school, that you would help them to make wise decisions. Father, I pray for their parents, that you would provide for them financially and also give wisdom, not only as they think about next year, but as they prepare for the next four years and even into what it is that you want them to do in their future. Father, I thank you that you have a clear call upon each one of us. And we do um, ask that you would help us to. Uh, guide and be, get, be guided as we make choices. And so we commit this um, meeting to you and we ask you to um, be with the, the students in your son's name. Amen. Okay, just a couple things that I need to share with you because one of the things that I'm real proud of is that we do have a lot of resources on the FCA website and sometimes um, students don't realize that now, if you're at FCA, you should know that on your Chromebooks, there is a little app in the bottom uh, right corner that you can click into, and it does have a direct link into the FCA website. But um, some of the things that I'm going to be talking about, um, you, I'm going to give you an overview. So again, we're going to be in talking to you in a week or so about your schedule. But if you're curious and want to look at some things or you're at home as a parent and you want to check some of these things out there, this is how you would go to find out information about scheduling. Um, just go to the FCA website and in the search box, you can search courses and scheduling. This has all of the scheduling forms, course offerings, uh, the course description manual, lots of different things to prep a student and get you ready for um, high school and even after even after you start a year um, looking ahead to your sophomore junior senior years there are also courses uh, resources for ccp planning which is college credit plus some of our students 
uh, ready to take college credit classes when they get to be sophomores, juniors, and seniors. And so there's information on this. Now, Mrs. Stevens is going to be doing a College Credit Plus video very similar to this for any student who is interested in doing College Credit Plus. So be looking, be on the lookout. Um, a lot of freshmen do not take CCP, very few do, but certainly into your sophomore, junior, and senior year, if you're ready to try college coursework, it's a great thing to do. The other um, resource, although there are many, many other things on the FCA website, also has to do with career and college planning. And this, and when you go to the FCA website, just search career. You can search career and college or just search career and it will pop up. But this has information about um, college, our Naviance program. There's also places where you can look to see information about, um, you know, here's a, sixth through eighth grade career advising resources and even into high school. So um, that's a really good place to, to start. There is information even prepping for the ACT for the future. All right, let's talk about your requirements for all students. Um, you are now going to be in high school, although some of you have taken high school credits by being in uh, phys ed this year or uh, taking Algebra 1, um, perhaps, or Spanish 1 as eighth graders. Requirements for all students at FCA to get a high school diploma are to complete 24 course credits. And those course credits fall into place in this manner. Bible, one year, one Bible per year in attendance at FCA. So if you're here and you graduate from FCA, you're here 9 through 12, you will have four credits of Bible. We have students that transfer in as sophomores, juniors, seniors, and they're not required to get all four credits. They just required to get one per year. You need uh, four credits of English language arts, uh, four credits of mathematics, three credits of science over your four years of high school, three credits of social studies, half a credit of health, half a credit of phys ed. Some of you may be using your seventh and eighth grade um, gym class for that half credit. A uh, full credit of fine arts, a full credit of computer, half of a credit of senior project, which is taken in the senior year, and then electives. Um, minimally, you need two and a half electives. We put foreign language in under electives because it's, it is a foreign language, but it's also a college prep elective. We do recommend that for any student who is looking to go to college. There is an academic honors diploma. So we have a regular diploma from the state of Ohio, and then we have an academic honors diploma from the state of Ohio. In order to get that, the students, you, need to um, fulfill seven of the following eight criteria. So you just have to have seven of them. There are eight to choose from. The first one is English. You have to have four credits of English. The funny thing is that the honors diploma and the regular diploma, you have to have four credits of English. So you do one, you do both. Uh, four credits of math, same thing here. You do one, you do both. Here's where it starts to get different. Regular um, diploma requires three sciences. The honors diploma requires four credits of science, and it must include chemistry and another advanced science. Social studies, again, the regular diploma requires three, the honors diploma four. Foreign language, regular diploma does not require foreign language. Okay, the honors diploma requires three credits in one language or two credits or two years in two different languages. Fine arts, one credit, which again, the high, regular high school diploma requires fine arts as well as um, the honors diploma. Grade point average of 3.5 on a 4.0 scale. That is very, very important. I will talk more about your GPA, um, but that is one of the things you wanna keep a, a close eye on. And then finally, this is the part that, um, this is actually the criteria, the last one is one that you may not know until you're a junior. So what we advise you to do is to, to schedule yourself with all of the first seven 
And then when you get to be a junior or some students take their ACT or the SAT as sophomores, but when you take it, if you get a 27 as a composite or an SAT of 1280 and um, super scoring is allowed, which means that if you take it more than once, we average the best area of the test and, and re-average your score. Once you have a 27, then you can go back and adjust any of the above ones. So for instance, if you get a 27 and you're not sure whether you wanna take science, the four science your senior year, your 27 will allow you then to just take three sciences. There are other honors diploma options, the STEM, STEM honors diploma, um, arts honors diploma, and then social science and civic engagement honors diploma those are those those emphasize more diploma areas um, like in math and sciences or arts um, there is information on the fca website for that as well since you are in the class that has now what's called the permanent requirements um, your requirements in addition to getting your 24 credits also include demonstrating competency um, by passing the algebra one end of course exam and the english 10 end of course exam with a competent score now I, the competent score is is an easily attainable score I will talk about that more as you get to the age of taking ELA 10, which is your sophomore year. Any of you who took Algebra 1 last year, you did pass with a competent score. If you're presently in Algebra 1 this year, you'll take that at the end of the course. We will let you know if you have a competent score. It actually goes on your transcript. The other thing that you need as a permanent requirement is um, to uh, take it's called preparation for college and career. It's called earning two diploma seals. These are actually seals that will go on your diploma, that go on your transcript. They're a little um, circular seal that, that say that you have completed coursework or completed something that demonstrates that you're ready for college or you're ready for a career. There are a bunch of them. You need to have at least two you may get more than two, many of our students do. And you'll see that some of them are listed here. The Ohio Means Jobs Readiness Seal, that's kind of for students who are career center, and we do have some students that um, will attend career center during their junior and senior years. The Honors Diploma Seal, you'll see here, that's another reason that if you work for your Honors Diploma, you also get a seal, so you're kind of double dipping. Um, there is a state seal by literacy, which has to do with foreign language. There's a technology seal. Um, industry recognized credential seal again that's more of a career tech one the citizenship seal is tied to your end of course testing that you'll take as a u.s history or government student again these are things that you're not ready yet to do so you can't get the seal but as we talk to you over the next four years it will become more and more clear and we will remind you because believe it or not we are very, very much wanting you all to graduate and be successful. So um, the college ready seal has to do with your ACT scores. So that's another reason why we encourage you to take the ACT. It shows that you're college ready. The science seal is, again is tied to an end of course, your biology um, end of course that you would take you'll take in your sophomore year. There is a military enlistment seal. Um, for any of our students who are interested in enlisting in the military, and we do have um, seniors that do that. And then there are three that are, they're called locally defined um, student engagement seals, fine and performing arts and community service. And those are specifically tied to FCA. So those are things that we've developed. Now you can only, of the two seals you're required to get, only one can be locally defined. And then you have to get another that's the state defined one. Now that's to get the two. You could have four, five, six. There is no limit to the number of seals. I guess there is. Um, I don't know how many will fit on your diploma, but there isn't a limit to the number of seals. And so um, I do not believe that we will have anybody that is going to be in danger of not graduating with, with seals. And again, we will walk you through that. 
If you want more information about the diploma seals and also graduation requirements that I'm going to be talking about, um, again, go to the FCA website and in this case, search graduation and all this stuff will pop up, give you more information than what I've just kind of, I've given you an overview. College readiness test, that is something that as a, as a, a junior um, going forward, you will take um, to get you prepared. And this is a score. Actually, we do the test here at FCA. You get the results and it's kind of really a nice, uh, it's free for the first time. Some students, they only take it once and then some students take it multiple times. All right, let's talk about the FCA grading scale. Um, you as eighth graders have only been familiar with what we call the standard scale. Maybe you had the uh, uh, mastery scale when you were younger, but there in high school, there are two scales. We have the FCA standard scale, which is for most of our classes, and then the FCA honor scale. And the honor scale for honors classes and also CCP classes, college credit plus classes. And probably the best way to explain that is that this scale is uh, the rank, the uh, ranking is a little bumped up. So for instance, if you get an A minus, an A minus is the same GPA 4.0 as an A. So it does allow a little more of a window. So students hopefully are not afraid to take the more difficult classes because the reality is the more difficult classes you take, the more information you gain, the more learning you have, the better you're going to do on the ACT, which is going to result in, in um, you know, great scholarship potential um, for the future. Now let's talk about your FCA grading or FCA, the FCA grading scale, your high school grade is on your diploma for the semester grade for each class. So no, for, so for instance, your algebra one, if you're in algebra one or Spanish one, that semester grade each semester is part of your high school transcript. We don't put the final year we put the semester, and um, that is really to help make sure that the ki that uh, kids, especially senior year, we're not waiting to the end of the senior year for their final GPA um, change. Now, FCA um, also has exam classes in high school, similar to what you do as eighth grade, and they will still be the same ones, which are English, math, science, social studies, and foreign language. The difference between junior high exams, which we give you to help prepare you for high school, is that the exam classes in um, high school represent 20% of the semester grade. For um, So it is very, very important that as you are taking your classes in high school, that you listen to and prepare for your final exams. Your grade point average. Um, your GPA in high school um, is very, very important. And, and I'm going to pause just a little bit and just kind of give you an idea of what's going on at the college level now. Um, the pandemic has obviously changed many, many things. But prior to the whole pandemic, colleges were beginning to move into what uh, they call test optional choices for students who are wanting to um, apply to college. By test optional, I mean that you, you could apply to a college and say, I, do, I want you just to look at my GPA and the activities that I've done to um, accept me into college and not look at my ACT scores or SAT scores. Um, or you could do the opposite, which is you say, yes, I want you to look at both my ACT and SAT scores, or all three, my GPA and then my activities. Um, that is because of that, the GPA has become even more important um, because I, I believe that you have more control as a student over your GPA than you do over taking an ACT test. Um, so therefore, we are we encourage you to manage your grade point, manage your GPA, and keep an eye on it. And there are some things that we have um, instituted at FCA, which I think are really good to help a student prepare so that when they get to apply for college um, during the fall of your senior year, um, you can 
have the best GPA and be positioned for scholarships in the very best way you can. All right, so that being said, your high school credit classes that you have taken in seventh and eighth grade, which for um, some of you are gonna be your phys ed, could be marching band, could be um, algebra one, maybe even a geometry class and Spanish one. A couple of you are taking a health class. Now, the final grade for that course is on your cumulative high school um, GPA. We don't put the semester by semester. So in a, in a sense, because you're taking it early, you have a little bit of an advantage. We take your overall average, which is helpful. If you had an A minus one first semester and a strong A second semester, then your final grade is an A. And so you have a 4.0 A, which is, is nice. Now, when you get to high school, it doesn't work that way. It's each semester. So let's talk about the grade forgiveness program. Um, this is a program where we do allow students to retake a course that they've passed with a lower grade, which means that passed it has to be a D or better. You can't, you can't have a forgiveness for an F. You still have to retake the course. That's a whole different scenario, so don't get Fs. Um, but with prior approval, you can um, take a, a course to improve on your grade and um, this has been only in the classroom, but because we have been really successful with the Ignitia program, we have instituted the opportunity for students to do the online Ignitia program. Why would this be important? Well, I'll give you an example. I have a senior this year. She um, has uh, almost a 4.0, except that when she was a eighth grader, she got an A minus in her algebra class. Well, because uh, of that A minus as an eighth grader, when she was younger, your age, um, she didn't have a perfect 4.0. So this year, we uh, allowed her to do the Ignitia um, online algebra. And basically what that is, is it's a pretest. So you take a pretest in the unit and depending upon how you do, then she finishes lessons that show weakness. And of course, we want you to know the information. So she very easily, because she had been in advanced math, was able to go back, retake that algebra one, and then um, we changed her A minus. We didn't change it, but she was able to earn the A on her um, transcript. So it is a really neat program. Um, it emphasizes the uh, learning and it also helps you to. Um, uh, have a good GPA when it comes to the end of the of graduate of, of getting ready for college. So GPA for graduation, um, we do not rank. Um, by ranking, um, that narrows down what scholarships are out there. We don't have a we don't have one valedictorian or one salutatorian. We have what's called the um, cum laude system. And based, you get medals based on what your final GPA is in high school. And you can see here, the summa cum laude is a student who has a 4.0, magna cum laude is a student who has a 3.9 to 399, and cum laude is for a student who has a 3.7 to a 3.89. GPA for graduation. Um, we use your GPA to um, determine who our graduation speakers, and that really comes from not only the GPA, but also ACT. Other things to look forward for graduation. Um, your GPA also is tied to whether you wear honor courts, um, the principal's honor roll, high honor roll, honor roll, and then members of honor societies often uh, definitely will wear honor courts representing like NHS or um, U Alpha Theta. All right, GPA for college acceptance. And I'm telling you this now because believe it or not, the next four years are gonna fly by actually the next three years, because here's the deal. Your GPA is important for college applications. And like I said, this test optional thing now has made the GPA even more important. But the thing that sometimes you students don't realize is that your GPA at the end of your junior year is very, very, very important because you're going to be applying for um, colleges during the fall during November, October, November of your senior year. So that those colleges are going to see your GPA that is your first three years of high school. So really, really, really important and very, very important to be smart about 
how you approach your course loads, okay? So that's what this GPA versus credits completed quickly. Um, I have students that think that if I can do my credits quickly, and let's see, I, uh, sometimes I get this. I'm gonna load up on all my credits during my ninth, 10th, and 11th grade year, and then my senior year, I'm just gonna relax. Don't do that. Please don't do that unless you really, really, unless you can do that. You know, you can get an A in every class and you're you're taking eight periods of credits and kudos to you. You're going to be a kid who needs to take, uh, C, you know, CCP classes. But here's the deal. If you take a bunch of credits and you get Bs or Cs, that doesn't help your GPA. You are better off taking less credits and focusing on making sure your GPA is strong. Now, one of the things we're gonna tell you to do when we get together with you is to plan out your four years of high school. Okay, so think about, you know, what am I gonna take each year? Obviously, it's easy for English. I gotta take four years of English, so A, one, two, three, four. Bibles, one, two, three, four. Math, one, two, three, four. But um, other things, you know, that may want to kind of hold off on um, is part of what you need to make a decision about. Um, other things about college recommendation that are important. Um, course load. Uh, again, that has to do with what you're taking. We really encourage you, if you are going to college, that you take um, the most demanding courses that you can take. And I'll talk about that as, as we um, look at each of the different courses that you can pick. College recommendation, your ACT scores and your GPA are very important. I've already talked about that. Um, make sure you have a balanced course load. And then also well-rounded versus academic only. Please remember, colleges are not just looking for smart students. There are lots of smart students out there, but many of your colleges are looking for students who have an um, awareness of the community, have done community service, are participating in sports, um, are doing something that makes them able to communicate with other people instead of just being academic only. Okay, so when you plan your high school you're just not only planning what classes you're going to take for your gpa but you're also going to plan what activities you're going to take for your, your senior resume um study hall let's talk about study hall um there are parents who do not believe that a study hall is important there are kids that don't believe the study hall is important and that is a personal uh, choice if you don't have a lot of things you're doing after school, um, then studying at home works well for you and that's fine. However, if you are involved in church, if you're involved in athletics, you may find that you do need study hall during the school day. Generally, we recommend a student has one study hall. Sometimes students have more than one study hall and that is okay, especially if it's during like a football season. Um, we can adjust your study hall. Some, uh, if you're taking CCP courses where you're doing work, much work outside of class, you do need study halls. So um, just think about study halls and having that as an option. The other nice thing about study halls is that we can also put you into forgiveness or ignition courses during study hall, um, which gives you kind of a flexibility where you can work on that course um, while you're when you need to, and then you can use study hall time when, when you need it to. So there's a little flexibility there. I'm going to tell you right now, as a going into freshman year, avoid senior slack off. Please do not get the mindset that your senior year is going to be your easier. In fact, the best seniors that I have seen that navigated into college did not slack off. They consistently went and did good work um, that doesn't mean that they didn't enjoy their senior year. They did, um, but they were wise in how they managed it and they persevered to the end. The Bible says that better is the end thereof than the beginning. We can all start strong, but it shows how well you finish and um, we want you to transition to college well. Um, college applications and scholarships, obviously your GPA, um, your activities are part of that. And so those are important things. 
Um, looking ahead, you will take the PSAT as a sophomore and a junior. I'm just going to kind of give you an idea. Um, those are testing experiences that we have at FCA. Um, your teachers will help you prep for them. The ACT and the SAT can be taken, I think actually this says seven times a year. I believe they have increased it. So you can take it um, starting your ninth grade year many, many times. There is no limit to it. Um, and starting in September of 2020, the ACT did have where you could take a, a section test um, as opposed to taking the whole test every time, um, which is kind of a neat way to help students be able to super score. Um, Naviance, and I showed you that as one of our uh, resources at the, on the website. This is uh, what we have as our college and career planning resource. Like I said, it has lots of college, career searches, interest, strength and assessments, ways that you can look at finding colleges, thinking about careers. There's even a free ACT practice with 76 hours of practice. And then there's a resume builder. Um, that resume builder is important because your senior year, you will build a resume as part of your senior project. Now, I'm going to pause right now and say to all of you eighth graders and parents, please, please, please. Um, I had a senior come in my office last week and she said, do you know what uh, what awards and activities I was in as a, as a freshman? And honestly, I had to say no. Um, it, it's impossible for us in the guidance tra office to track that information. It's really, really important that you, min I mean, it'd be great if you started the resume builder in Naviance. Um, so every time you got an award or if you made it into an honor society or you were a part of a sport, you could put that in your resume or you did 4-H or whatever you were doing, you put it in your resume in high school. That would be the greatest thing you could do. The next best thing is to get yourself a folder or an envelope and then as you are part of organizations and you get certificates, put them in that folder so that at least when you get to the point your senior year, you can take that folder and then go through it and it will remind you. So um, it's very, very important because we don't want you to short, um, short yourself by not including important things, especially like um, you know things that you do for community service and outreach. All right, College Credit Plus. Basically, it um, requires you to have an ACT uh, score or an Accuplacia score that shows that you are college ready. We, it's really, really wise not to take college credit classes before you're ready because you will damage both your high school GPA and your college GPA by doing that. So the caveat here is don't take them unless you're ready to take them, unless you can handle the, the, heart, the work. Um, it is the ability to enroll in college while you are in high school, and then you earn credits for both high school and college. It is a great program. We offer classes here at FCA, and I'm just going to show you kind of, this is the statistics um, for FCA. As you can see, most of our kids um, who, who take CCP classes generally take them during their 10th, 11th, and 12th grade year. Um, very few take it in seventh through ninth grade year. They're not, it's not that you're not necessary. There are some that are ready to take it early, but most aren't. What we encourage students who um, are college ready and want to dip your toes into the CCP pool, so to speak, is to, if you're ready as a 10th grader, take the CCP US history class. And then as you, if you're successful there, then your 11th and 12th grade year, then expand on those, those courses. And again, that's another reason to plan out your four years. So you can say, okay, I wanna take psychology as a junior and sociology as a junior, and then maybe uh, statistics and calculus as a senior. When we talk about planning um, courses, uh, most of the FCA classes are, uh, what are, are your traditional classes. They're based on, 120 hours, you're in school, um, in class, and you get a, a full credit. Um, 60 hours is usually a half of a credit or half of a year. Phys Ed and mentor courses, you're in um, for longer hours for, for less credit. Some of that has to do with 
it's not fully academic. I mean, obviously in phys ed, you're changing. So I don't know if you get credit for changing clothes. I don't know. Anyway, that's why that is set up. Okay, so when we come talk to you about scheduling, we'll talk about um, each of the courses that you need to take. And obviously one, the first one is Bible. So next year, as a ninth grader, you will take Bible 9. And all of the course descriptions, again, are on the FCA website. I'm not going to talk about every single course, although I'm going to give you some some tips on some of them over the years. But to know specifically about what's going on in Bible, the course description handbook on the FCA website is the best place to look. Part of Bible is what we call CECL. And CECL is uh, Students Engaged in Servant Leadership. CECL is actually our FCA service organization. Okay, so you automatically, when you become a freshman, will be part of a service organization that needs to go on your resume. And the activities that you do that are tied to um, CECL, number one, they're part of your Bible requirement. But number two, they also help you build your senior resume because again, scholarships, college acceptance, they love to see students are involved in community service. There are a lot of community service scholarships out there. And finally, the Community Service Diploma Seal is one of the local seals that FCA has. And by doing CECL, we also make sure that you are going to be able to earn one of those diploma seals. English, um, next year you'll take English 9, one of your four courses that you need to graduate. Math. Um, that's going to be different and that's going to be based on where you are in math. Now college prep minimum for math is algebra 1, algebra 2, and geometry. Sometimes geometry can be taken or actually the, the sequence is usually algebra 1, geometry, then algebra 2. Sometimes we have students who take it algebra 1, algebra 2, and geometry. Depends on their schedule. Um, there is a math tracking letter on the FCA website again under scheduling that really talks about all of the math tracks that we have there are three um we have the regular we have the fast and then we have the fastest track um a lot of students depending upon your strength in math um will be on one of those three tracks and that's perfectly fine because any of those three tracks will get you both a, di a diploma from the state of ohio and also will prepare you for college um, if if you're planning on doing college. Um, the tracking letter specifically as I'm talking to you right now as an eighth grader if you're in pre-algebra probably next year you're going to sign up for algebra one. If you're in algebra one as an eighth grader um, take a look at your GPA. You should take geometry but if you have a B you might want to retake algebra one. That's a conversation to have with your parents. Um, if you are in geometry as an eighth grader then you would take algebra two next year. Um, the other thing I want to encourage you is to take math every year. Stay math ready and not math rusty. One of the things that you need to avoid as a senior is this whole thing of, oh, I have four, I only need four years of math, so my senior year, I'm not going to take math. Don't do that. Don't do that at all. Um, sometimes you need to do that, but for reality, if you are going into college, you're going to need some sort of math. It's not a bad idea to know what math you need, but keep yourself math ready. It's also going to help you with your ACT testing. Um, science. Physical science is the ninth grade physical science. And um, just to prep you, college minimum is physical science, biology, and chemistry. And we strongly recommend that as seniors, students take physics. It helps the ACT score amazingly. And then anatomy and physiology is um, also an advanced science. Social studies, you need three for a regular uh, diploma and four for an honors diploma. In uh, ninth grade, world history is the course that you take. College prep recommendations um, are that you take world history, you take U.S. history, you take U.S. government and economics with the financial literacy. Um, social studies units must include a minimum of a half a credit of American history, although you'll end up with a full year, half a credit of American government, which is what we what we offer, and then a half a credit of world history or civilizations. 
which you will get through the world history that you take as a ninth grader. Foreign language. Again, I told you earlier that it's not required to graduate, but most colleges do recommend at least two credits in one foreign language and uh, three or four are encouraged or two years in two languages. And again, the honors diploma rule says to get at least three or two and two. Uh, foreign language. Um, we have Spanish one through five in the classroom. Those of you who are in eighth grade taking Spanish one this year, you can eventually take um, five years of uh, Spanish and we encourage it. If you are strong in Spanish, do that. Um, a lot of times you can test out of uh, credits or test uh, in college and be able to be either put into an advanced course or not have to take a uh, foreign language at all because of your um, doing well in high school. We also offer Spanish on our Ignitia lab. Um, I, let me back up to the classroom. Taking a foreign language in the classroom is the very best way that you can take it. You're gonna get um, your speaking, you're gonna get your listening, you're gonna get your writing, all of that involved. Taking Spanish on a computer is not as productive um, but it can be done and it is still accepted as a college. Ignitia is is recognized as a college. Um, it's recognized by the NCAA as a college preparatory program. So if you do, if you want to be an athlete in college um, and you take Ignitia Spanish, it is going to be OK um, to get you into college. So that's why we have stuck with the Ignitia lab. And we do have Spanish one, two and three in Ignitia and French um, one and two. Fine arts, um, there is an offering sheet. If uh, it's on the FCA website under scheduling, it lists all of the offerings that are that are that we have for fine arts, which include art, um, marching band, choir, uh, visual media, um, painting, just to name a few of those fine arts. Um, many of those courses can be taken for repeat credit. Night Singers is also fine arts. Um, I really, really, really would encourage you that if you sing or you're in band, keep it up, do it. And when I say many courses may be taken for repeat credit, that means that you can be in band, every marching band every year for four years and get a, a new credit every year. Um, that looks great, great on your resume. It also shows that you are, um, you know, you're, you're dedicated, you're consistently part of, of um, improving uh, an organization at school and being part of choir. And it's fun if you enjoy it. Um, computer, you must graduate with at least one credit of computer. Um, we, the option we have is computer one. We really recommend if you can to take it as a freshman because it helps you make sure that your keyboarding is good and that you know how to use programs that you're going to be need to do use in high school. You will do a lot of computer tech, Google Classroom, um, PowerPoints, um, different things in high school, and you definitely will do them in college. So we highly recommend that you take the course. Um, if you're good in computer already, it's going to be an easy A. You hopefully will enjoy it. It'd be great for your GPA. We do have what's called the Computer Competency Assessment. Okay, and I'm gonna say students and especially parents, please hear me when I say the computer, computer competency assessment is for the kid who can type very, very well and knows their way around computer programs very, very well. Okay, it's a, it's a project-based assessment. The students do the project. They show their ability to do um, programs and work on programs and they turn it in. There's not a class. It's just a project they turn in. They do get a grade. It does go on your GPA and it is a credit. However, if you are, it really needs, the parents need to assess whether a student has the competency or not. Okay. Um, don't let your child take this assessment to get the credit and not have the skill. It, it's not a good idea to go into college and not be able to type quickly and well, or know your way around the computer. 
Um, we also do offer Ignitia online lab courses um, in computer science and software development, office, different things for students who want to delve a little deeper but want to do it on their own at their own pace. Um, phys Ed. Students need a half a credit of Phys Ed. Again, I'll remind you that if you're seventh and eighth grader and you took Phys Ed, um, you do have a part of your high school credit um, taken care of. Strength training is great for athletes. We offer that in high school and encourage uh, students to be part of that. It can be taken for two, three, four, five days a week, um, which makes it a nice flexible way, not only to earn the credit, but also to spread out your training um, during the school day. There's also a physical education waiver that the state of Ohio um, has uh, allowed student or schools like FCA to, um, to have. The half credit phys ed requirement can be waived by participating in two seasons of any FCA sport, cheerleading, archery, and or marching band. So that means that um, if you, you can waive the phys ed uh, requirement, so for instance, next year, if you are in volleyball and basketball, volleyball and basketball are two seasons of an FCA sport, or you're in archery for two years in a row, or you're in marching band for two years in a row, or next year you're in volleyball and marching band. Uh, volleyball is a sport, one sport, marching band is two. Okay, so it can be any combination of those two things, uh, two seasons of, um, and that can waive the Z requirement. The waiver is an application that you have to fill out, not hard to fill out, just needs for signature of the coach and the athletic de uh, department verifying that you did complete the season or the uh, marching band instructor. Um, the waiver is placed on your student transcript. There is no credit or grade. It just is on there as a waiver. So on one hand, um, it's it takes care of your phys ed requirement. On the other hand, it's kind of nice if you have an A in phys ed to get that GPA. Um, you also have to have an additional half credit amount in another subject area. You still have to graduate with 24 credits. Um, it just waives that as a phys ed requirement, um, but you still need to pick something else up. Ignitia phys ed, um, believe it or not, we do have Ignitia phys ed. Yes, you can do um, it. it um, phys ed online there it does have activities that you have to do outside um, and and a log that you have to take but it does allow students um, who you know um, want to do their phys ed maybe they're not involved in the sport but want to do their um, phys ed that way um, the other thing with ignition is it can be adjusted based on the credit needed to meet the uh, half credit amount. Why is that important? Well, sometimes we have junior high kids that maybe during junior high, they only took 0 0.30 and so they're short 0.2. Well, we can adjust that Ignitia Phys Ed in such a way that it can make up that um, the uh, missing, you know, the, the, the credit that they still need to, to get the, the full half credit. Um, Ignitia can be taken during the school year or it can be taken during the summer. And I'm gonna kind of fly through this, but basically we do have Ignitia Phys Ed. Um, the course is $160 for the full half credit. If you're only taking it for a partial credit, we do reduce the amount. Mrs. Stevens is the one who takes care of that and we need you to register for classes. Um, we will let you know uh, that that information is out there, but that kind of gives you an idea of when we, we let you know, and then when you can access the course and it's done during the school year, or not during the school year, it's during the summer, you come in just to take tests. Um, health is another half credit course that you're required to take in um, high school. We do have Ignitia online during the school year. That is the platform we use for the health. It's a great program because health is not that hard to do. Gives the students a chance to experience Ignitia um, and actually some of you eighth graders, because the way the schedules work this year, uh, we, we opened, you guys were the first class that we opened up taking health. And so some of you have done that this year and we'll have that health credit. Um, you can also as eighth graders going into the summer, take your health. And so if you want to do that, to get um, that credit out of the way and it gives you something to do in the summer, it can 
Again, that course is $160. Mrs. Brake, who has done it for years and years, is our facilitator for that. Um, again, the registration and payment um, fall in May. Um, the Ignitia Health, you do the unit work at home online and you come in, there's, uh, I believe, five tests at the end of the unit. You come in and she has a day each week um, that you can come in and schedule with her to come in. So it makes it nice and flexible to get your health credit done. Again, I've been talking about Ignitia Lab. It's basically 65 courses that are offered during the school year. It is scheduled into a teacher supervised lab period. You have the Chromebook, you have a computer access. You can do it at home. It's 24 seven students work at a different pace. I have had kids finish their health in three weeks. Um, so, or some kids who do health all year. Um, it does just kind of give you an opportunity or other courses um, to you know, spread out or work at your own pace. And it does have more options for students. Um, senior project is uh, the project that's called our capstone project. We do that at, obviously during senior year. What it is, is it, uh, it's where a student makes a decision about a project and we take all the skills that they've learned through high school and it kind of comes together at the end of the, their senior year. They do a project, they write research paper, and then they do a presentation um, in May about their capstone project. Um, senior year this is the senior resume and again i'm going to emphasize is start your freshman year please 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 keep track of what you've done you will build a senior resume if you build it as you go that's even better that senior resume is part of your capstone project a lot of our kids have benefited from having a senior resume when they get ready to do scholarships or do applications it just makes everything easier or they need a job um, and they've got a resume there. And um, we've had kids who have gotten a job because they actually came to the uh, interview with a resume and were very, you know, very much impressed the interviewer. Naviance is where you can build your resume again, um, which is a good thing to, to have. Some things that are resume builders. It's important for you to know now what things to plan ahead to do and not wait till your senior year and then say, oh, I wish I had done, okay? So resume builders um, to remember, being part of athletic teams, being on student council, class officers, uh, being a member of the quiz team, being a uh, part of honor societies like NHS or Mu Alpha Theta or the English Honor Society or the Art Honor Societies or our Music Honor Societies, being part of those are great resume builders. Peer tutoring, that would be like math tutoring or um, helping out in the classroom um, with students. Being part of band and choir, those are huge resume builders. Uh, mentor opportunities, mentoring at school where you work with a teacher or you work in the office. Again, the reason that that's important is that you we don't choose people to work in the office or help teachers unless you show responsibility. Um, so that's a, that is seen on a resume as being something that you are responsible for. Um, Cecil, mission outreach work. Again, like I said, community service is big for, for making choices or for helping colleges choose students and also for make, for doing scholarships. And believe it or not, babysitting and house sitting should be on your resume or pet sitting. Again, nobody's going to leave their little baby with someone who's not responsible or their house or their pet. Okay, so when colleges or so um, scholarship organizations see that you are involved in that, they are very much impressed. Other things that are resume building are like uh, work. Um, uh, students who work in the summer, um, 4-H, 4-H is wonderful, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, all of those things, activities in youth groups, those are things that would need to be on your resume. All right, what to do now? Well, the next step in the process is going to be, um, obviously, if if you're watching this during the school year, we're going to come in, Mrs. Stevens and I are going to come in with the paper and the pre-scheduling form. Um, the pre-scheduling form is what you'll fill out and you'll you'll check off what things you want to take. Um, you're going to fill up eight class periods of uh, academic periods. Uh, we have nine periods here at FCA, so that's eight academics and then we let you eat lunch. Um, we're pretty nice with that. 
Uh, we really recommend that you, um, if at all possible, you know, definitely make sure that you choose at least one um, course during the day that you enjoy and, you know, put it in a study hall that gives you uh, a margin, you know, gives you room to balance your life, um, get caught up, uh, make sure that you're, you know, clean your locker out or whatever. Those, it's not bad to have a study hall, touch base with a teacher, um, you know, use that study hall to look for scholarships or college planning or some of these things that I've talked about that sometimes students say, I don't have time to do it. Well, study hall is a great time to do some of those things. So we're going to fill out the pre-scheduling form. You will give that. You'll you'll take that home. Your parents will sign it. Um, uh, you'll bring it back. We use that to build the master schedule for next year. And then we'll, after the master schedule is built, we'll use your pre-scheduling form to build you a schedule. And then um, we will, you obviously, hopefully will see it during the summer. And um, then during the first couple weeks of school, if you need to make changes to your schedule, you can. Now, let me, you know, let me warn you about making changes. Please, please, please try and make your changes um, early. It's very, very hard to catch up if you wait to add a class two weeks into it. So it really wise to think through, that's again, why we think through your, your plan, your four year schedule so that we can revisit it every year, it can change. Okay, so the pre-scheduling form will get turned into the guidance office and um, we will see you in a little while um, to do that scheduling session in class. If you are a brand new student to our um, school, welcome. Um, we're looking forward to getting to know you um, as a freshman in high school. Uh, we will email you information um, so that you can fill out the pre-scheduling form. And again, if you have questions, please um, contact Mrs. Stevens or myself, Mrs. Kaneckle, at the guidance office, um, either through email or give us a phone call and we will help you. So, um, as I said, I enjoyed uh, time with you and ask you to do um, prepare for your senior year or your high school years. Thank you and goodbye.